Welcome, welcome, welcome. Feel free to unmute until we get started and say a few words. Glad to have you here. How fun is this? It always seems kind of weird for it to be completely silent when people are joining. So I, uh, it makes me nervous. So I like to have some chat going on. Good. Yeah. Chat is also open. And if you'd like to add a little line there about where you're from and whether you're new to all of this, I'd love to be able to look at that later. Um, I am going to get started, and I believe that Zena James is here. Are you here, Zena? Yes. Great. Hi, there she is. Great. Hi. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is my business partner and daughter. And we manage everything together. And we, I will say I'm one of the luckiest mothers in the world because we've got a great team. Now, let me explain to you, this is informal. And what the reason that we're actually here is because we get so many questions about what CST is, creative strength training. And it seems to me that there are so many visual parts to it that I could explain it it's like lots of things. You can explain it certain kinds of things over and over again, but you'll never really get it till you do it. And so it seemed to me that if I could put together a slide presentation and share it with people so they could actually see the moving parts, um, that would be a good idea. So that's what I'm going to do first. It's not real long or involved. And then after that, we'll answer questions or Zen and I'll just do some chatting. But anyhow, we'll answer any questions that people have and hopefully just have a good time. And I know I can see already that there are some um, people here who are members of CST and y'all are welcome to chime in with your experiences at any point as well. So we'll get started with the screen share first. And I would like you to mute yourselves right now if you haven't already done so. So creative strength training actually arose as an idea back in, oh, I don't know, 2012, maybe 2011, because I was teaching a lot of independent studies. And one time in a discussion that we were having, somebody pointed out that I was asking them literally to consider having a daily practice and to take a particular thing and to do it on a regular basis, because that's how we get really good at everything. And that's how we really tap our creativity. And it occurred to me, which I said to the group at that time, that as far as my experience has been, tapping your creativity and becoming an artist or a maker, however you define yourself, is not unlike what artists or, or what, what athletes do. They train. And sometimes they do push-ups, and sometimes they run distances, and sometimes they do yoga. But really good athletes are always in some form of training or regular practice. And I said, so really what, what I'm asking you to do or what we're talking about right now is creative strength training. And somebody in the group said, wow, that's a really powerful phrase. You should write that down and don't forget it. So I did write it down or I would have forgotten it. And that became the basis for an, an, an online class that was 10 weeks. And then that became the basis for a book that was picked up by North Light and is still in print. And that led to a three month lecture circuit up the West Coast in 2016. And when I got home from that lecture circuit, I realized that a lot of the people who had come to the lectures got dragged there by an artist friend but they were really glad they were there because they started to think of themselves as having creative potential or ability when they had not thought of that in the past. And so talked to my best resource and best sounding board, Zena, and said, you know, what, could, could, would you help me? Would you help me turn this into an online thing? <clears throat> and we did. And 10 weeks seemed like a good idea. That was a week for each of the chapters. But the reality is that changing habits takes a long time and it takes a support group. And if you're familiar with the cornerstones of creativity, you know that curiosity is something that we cultivate on an ongoing basis. That's the first one. And then we have, um, oh gosh, now I, I don't have them written down in front of me, but <clears throat> we, we're building confidence and we're, we're seeking a community of other people because 
when we clarity, that's the, the one that I was unclear about, of course. So we're seeking clarity and we do that by regularly looking and thinking about what we do and what we make. And when we can do that with a group of people that we can learn to trust and choose to trust, then we're in a better position to achieve some lasting change and level of confidence in what we do. And so at this point, after about a year of 10 week classes, it seemed to me that we were gonna get big and bold and we were gonna launch this and make it a 10 month program. And every wow. month we were gonna do different things and we were gonna talk about creativity and there were gonna be a lot of options. So that's where we started. And this is where we are right now. Every month on the first of the month, we release a whole bunch of information so that everybody has time to consider all of it for the entire month. And one of the things we do as part of those materials we release is that Zen and I sit down in the middle of the previous month and we talk about one of the archetypes that we're going to discuss. And we do this completely spontaneously. We don't have a script. We don't plan what to say to each other. And it has evolved into one of the real highlights of the program because it's worth it to have an older perspective and a younger perspective sharing ideas. And so that's a really rich part of what we do to, to kick off the month. Then every month we also have an interview with what I call the guest creatives. And the guest creatives are people like Rosalie Dace and Kevin Womack and Dolores Miller who have been working for a while and have, an, have established an art practice and have had a variety of levels of success. And I also talk to writers and I talk to the founder of Fiber Art Now, and I talk to all kinds of people who have had experience of one kind or another, and they share their ideas about getting a creative practice started. And they talk about what their own frustrations are. And they've been lately, we've always been talking about how we're all dealing with COVID and with being cooped up. And when even when we're introverts, what happens? And so the guest creatives are another part of what we offer. And then every month we also have the opportunity for critiques and critiques are not, everything is optional. You can do anything you wanna do and you don't have to do anything if you don't want to do it. But it, when you're willing to bring a piece to the table for a critique, and they're usually between six and 12 artists every month, you tell me what you'd like to be able to accomplish. And then I look at the work and I put together a presentation that everyone in the community can watch so that we can learn from each other. And so we can be inspired by the work that other people are doing. And these are just three examples from previous critiques. In addition to that, if you'd like to bring yourself to the table and work with me, you can do a case study. And this is an example from Barb Eide. And Barb had been working on a piece really most of the year. And toward the end of this past year, she came forward and gave me all the images and gave me the text so that I could put it together as a case study. And it was essentially based on the fact that this sunflower seed had been dropped into the petunia box and it started to grow and it grew all summer long. And she was very inspired. She actually got really attached to the sunflower. And it became kind of a metaphor for her own life. And so then she started to work with design elements and images. This is a little picture of her using the iPad and some apps that she learned in another class. And she started working at putting all the imagery together. And so what a case study does is literally lay out in visual form how one artist took an idea and expanded upon it. And then everybody gets to learn and be inspired. And it's a great opportunity for the person who did the work to share what they've accomplished with a larger community. And this is Barb's final piece called Stand oh, Standing Tall. That's lovely. Isn't that great? Yes. We also have three meetings a month or discussions. I wouldn't say they're really meetings. I don't call things to order. I can hardly do anything because it's like herding cats, but in any, <laughs> event, in any event, and I think if you wouldn't mind, I'm not quite sure who's talking, but please go ahead and mute yourself till, till we're finished. 
this is a screenshot of what those look like. And the first meeting of the month, we always talk about the archetype that we're studying that particular month. And then in the second meeting, we have typically in the past talked about what I call getting unstuck, where people bring design issues or, or problems that they're having with not being able to work, for example, to the table. And we all talk about that and share ideas. And then the general meeting, which is the third meeting of the month, and these are between an hour and hour and a half uh, long, and they're also recorded. So if the timing doesn't work, you can always watch the recording later. In the general meeting at the, the last one of the month, we talk about whatever comes up. And I always have a bunch of stuff in, in holding pattern in case there isn't enough to talk about, but somehow we always manage to fill the time. And we have a lot of fun in those discussions. And then when, when we were all living, with, well, we still are living with COVID, we got this idea because we were home. I wasn't going anywhere. My teaching came to a, a, a stunningly fast halt out of town. We decided we'd do an online exhibition and it's pretty straightforward. Anybody who can send good pictures is in. It's not juried, it's completely inclusive. It's incredible. So we started with one last summer, uh, sorry, 2020, and the images weren't really good enough to do a catalog. So then we, we upped our game a little bit and we did an archetype show in the fall where the images were good enough. So we published a catalog that's on Amazon. And then we did the catalog that's behind this one for the member show in 2021. And we've just recently had another archetype show that was um, opening, that did open in December and it's on my website now. So if you haven't seen it, you might wanna go and look because 80 people entered the Inspired by Archetype show this time around. And it is an amazing collection of work. And you know, the most beautiful thing about this because it's inclusive, everybody's included and everything is good. So here are just a few pictures of, of what the book looks like, the various catalogs. This is from Lynn Bainbridge from the UK. So we have weavings, and we have digital work like these, this piece from Lorraine Kirker. And we have mixed media pieces like this enchanting um, clay and mixed media piece from Barb Sorge. And then we have quilts and we have stitching and these beautiful pieces from Ginny Ewers are an example of, of some of that work. And this is a gorgeous botanical garment all the, all the fabric was botanically printed and dyed from Nori McElwraith. And then we always have each month an action prompt. And these are based on my creative strength training action and, and um, writing prompt cards. And it's always something that you can, again, you don't have to do it if you don't wanna do it, but the action prompt is usually some sort of an activity, a creative activity that you can do. If you're stuck, for example, this is a good place to, to start. For example, in December, we talked about embodied cognition, which is a form of being affected by knowing a thing and holding it and touching it. And so this was an encouragement to look for three different objects in your house, touch them and hold them and think about them because a lot of the time, engaging with your materials and your supplies or an actual object that way can be its own form of creative jumpstarting. And then in addition to the action prompt, there's a writing prompt and a lot of people don't like to write, so they just don't do this one. Nobody keeps score and there are no grades, everybody gets an A. But I have found that when people engage with the writing prompts and they do some of the things that I suggest over the year, it really is a great way of getting more in touch with a lot of what they're thinking and how they're feeling about what they create so that they can get clearer. It's back to that word clarity, because one of the things we do in, in creative strength training is that we, we talk a lot about preferences, because if we understand our preferences, the things that we like to do, and we put our energies into those preferences as often as we can, then we find a certain level of joy invading the making that we're doing and it, it, it's extremely satisfying. In addition to the videos and tutorials that we put up, we also have everything in a written form. These are PDFs and these are my originals. Zena formats them and they look really beautiful when she gets finished with them. But there's always an essay on the archetype of the month. There's always what we call cross training, which is 
writing prompts for those who are so inclined that have to do with the archetype of the month. And then I always tie the archetype to the, the chakras, which are, if you're not familiar with them, um, you can think of them as an energetic approach to creativity and making into your body that parallels your physical capacity or body. And I explain all of that in detail for people who aren't familiar with it. And then in order to keep it all organized, we always give you what's sort of a, I guess, a table of contents for the month. And it lays out all the things that you can read and all the things that you can do and the things that you don't want to miss that you'll either watch or listen to. And you can check off the box as you move through the list, or you can just use the list as a frame of reference. But it's a really good way to keep everything organized for yourself. And I provide lots of charts and full color PDF materials that you can print out. And those would include this chart that I made on uh, actually the creative aspect of the chakras or the chakras. And when people enroll, they right away, they get uh, a, a full color guide like this, which if, if you're so inclined, helps you make some decisions and think about how to do a set of archetype cards, which don't have to look like mine. This is my judge. They can be abstract. They can be all kinds of things. And if you're a member of CST or you join before, I think it's the 15th, you will be able to come to our, our two-day retreat, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of January. And one of the presentations we're having is actually Cheryl Broswell, and she's going to talk about the archetype cards that she put together, which are completely different from mine and just absolutely stunning. We try to make everything really accessible and keep it in one place. And Zena may be able to answer some questions about that in just a little bit. <clears throat> we also have what we call the creative eye. And the creative eye is an opportunity that is facilitated more easily, frankly, if, if you join the Facebook group and you're not obligated to do that. But the whole point of the creative eye is to help us learn to or be reminded to look for kinds of things around us in our environment that can be visually stimulating. And so one month it was repetition. This in 2021, each of the months was an art concept. And I explained the art concept in a tutorial and then encouraged people to look for examples, in this case, repetition. So these are images that I shared as uh, examples that month. People post their images on Facebook. If they don't, you can always send them to me. <coughs> Excuse me. And at the end of the month, in the spirit of our inclusive nature, we put all the names of everybody who participated in a hat and we draw out three of those. And those three people win the prize for the month. And sometimes the prize is art supplies and sometimes the, the, the prize is a, a book of some kind. And we mail that to the, the three people who are chosen at the end of each month. <clears throat> so that's kind of an overview of what we do in CST. And I hope that really does serve the purpose of giving you this beautiful visual feast of everything that we're doing. And I'm glad you're here and we can talk about it some more now. If there's anybody who's in CST right now who'd like to unmute and talk for a minute about your own experience, I welcome that as well. We, it may get a little chaotic if we don't use the hand up feature, but if you don't know how to use it, just go ahead and unmute and interrupt me because I started my career teaching kindergarten, so I can deal with a lot of distraction pretty easily. Yes, ma'am. Lauren. Okay, I'm unmuting. Great. And I'm okay. And now I'm on video. Great. Here's my question. Thank you. Um, I uh, have been receiving some emails from you, and um, I've been a little confused about this because it looks like you've got three levels of participation that go with three levels of cost. Uh, and I wonder if you wouldn't mind describing those. Certainly. Certainly. Um, we realized that some people, for whatever reason, you know, my background is in psychology and religion before I got interested in this, and that has served me well. And I realized that there are people who are introverts who don't really want to do meetings. They're perfectly happy 
being introverted and not engaging. And that's fine. I, I totally honor that. We, we both do. When I say I really, I mean Zena together, the two of us. Um, so last year we developed the reading level. So the reading level is the level for people who just really want to read the materials and they get a lot out of the written stuff and they watch the videos, they participate in everything, but they don't care about being in the exhibition and they don't really care about uh, coming to the, the, the discussions. And so that gives them the option of having the choice of just receiving the materials and anybody can start at that level. And then if they decide they'd really like to be part of the ongoing uh, community stuff that, that, we, that we plan, then they're welcome to, 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 to go up a level. And this year I have somebody who's traveling a lot and she wanted to stay in touch and she wanted to continue to read all of the essays and have that food for thought, but she bumped down to the reading level because she was gonna be on the road and she, she knew she wasn't gonna be able to take advantage of the, the live activities. But it's also true that at the immersion level, which is the middle level, where most people hang out, even if you don't come to the meetings, you can still watch them. And that's not true at the reading level. And even if you, so at the immersion level, you get all the reading materials and everything I've been talking about, but you also have access to all of the live events and you can enter the exhibitions. And we also have, which I did not talk about, topical groups and the topical groups form after the 1st of March. And that would be a series of 12 to 15 members who have an interest in one thing. So we have a botanical printing topical group and we have an archetype topical group and we have the embroidery enthusiasts. And so those groups plan their own meetings and they meet, they, they still talk about everything that's happening in CST but they also have this shared love that they're involved in. And that also would not be available to somebody at the reading level. Now the deep dive level is a, is a sort of a specialized area that anybody theoretically could be part of. So it's not exclusive, you don't get juried in. But on the other hand, it was really designed for, for artists who feel a real commitment to their work and wanna take it deeper and they meet separately two times a month for 90 minutes and talk about their own work and share what they're doing. So there's some level of critique, but there's also an aspect of talking about integrity and what it means to be an artist and take what you do seriously. So that's a little bit more of a commitment than most people are really interested in making, at least at the beginning. But this is the second year for the deep dive. And I have noticed that several of the people who have written to me and said that they wanted to participate in that, felt comfortable going up to that level because they had already been involved at the immersion level for a year or two. And so they sort of felt as though they had grown into it, which I think is probably a good idea. I had a couple people last year, since that was the first year of Deep Dive, who joined and I knew who they were, but as it turned out, it just really wasn't a great fit for either of them which doesn't matter at all, but it just wasn't a good fit. One of them dropped out and didn't come to any of the other meetings. And the problem about that is that there isn't a refund. So I, I caution anyone who's thinking about deep dive, but not sure to, just to wait a year. There's plenty of time. There's plenty of time. Does that help answer your question, Lauren? <clears throat> yes, very much so. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Pamela. Hi, Jane. I, oh, yeah. I'm, hi, I'm brand new to this, so um, I'm glad to meet you. My question was that you'd mentioned earlier um, action prompts and writing prompts from cards. Um, are those given out? Is there a deck of cards that we get, or can you can you explain more about that? Well, the cards are actually a freestanding product, and what I do is I choose a card from the deck and I scan it. And I include either a write, both a writing prompt and an action prompt. And actually last year I started writing additional prompts. This deck of cards is a standard thing that you can buy on my website. And it was originally created to go along with the book as before all of this happened. But then it occurred to me last year that using some of these prompts might be a useful thing because it would be another way, you know, if, if we're thinking about things people can do just to get started, I like to keep it in general, I like to keep it pretty simple. And I hate those books, keep it, or that, that phrase, keep it simple, stupid, because in my house, when Zena was growing up, stupid was a bad word. It was 
it was as bad as shit. You just didn't say it. And I still feel that way about that word. And the other thing I've realized is that sometimes keeping things simple is incredibly complicated. Yeah. And so it's one of those paradoxes that is just a part of the, the world that we live in. But I like to start by giving people simple things to do as they grow into the more complex things. And so you could certainly get online today and buy yourself a set of cards. And I'm not saying that you should do that at all. I don't push my products in that way, but you don't need to buy the deck in order to participate with that particular aspect of what we do because it's provided as part of the monthly package. Oh, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Deborah, glad to see you. Hello. <clears throat> um, thanks for this opportunity, Jane. And I just want to say that last year was my first year of um, participating in any way with CST. And I intend to participate this year. I did immersion last year. I'm going to do deep dive this year. So I think one of the things that uh, I, I experienced fairly early on in CST is starting to get overwhelmed with the amount of the material that's available. And of course, feeling that I had to be a perfectionist and keep up with everything. But when I realized that that was not the case and I needed to just relax and enjoy the journey and I have developed a certain pattern around use of materials, usually once or twice a week where I indulge in some reading and, uh, and some learning time. Um, and I set time aside for that. And then I participate in the meetings uh, and I found it to be tremendously beneficial. I also it was fortunate enough to be in a small group, a uh, topical group and, and we, um, our topic we determined as a group was the design elements that you talk about. And we shared taking turns researching and presenting. And it ended up being such a marvelous opportunity for camaraderie and getting to know each other. And I can honestly say there hasn't been um, a CST segment or event where I haven't learned something from other artists. So in the course of the year also, I think one of the biggest things that I've been able to do as an artist is to develop a pretty consistent discipline of getting into my studio every day. Um, I, I want to continue to improve that. And that's certainly one of the reasons why I'm doing the deep dive. But I think wherever people find their level and whatever uh, level of diving they want to do into the materials, it's all beneficial. And I'm very grateful for the experience. Thank you. Well, thanks for being willing to speak up and share that. I really appreciate it, Deborah. And th that's the, you know, I'm a preacher's daughter from the Midwest. And I was taught not to get too big for my britches. And so it's been hard for me, you know, I tell the story that one time somebody walked up to me in a gallery and they said, uh, I love your piece and I'd love to talk about buying it. Do you have a card? And I knew I didn't have a card, <laughs> but I scrounged around in my purse and I had five cards for my Saturn dealer because I was such a believer in the Saturn at that point in, in time. And I pulled out a card from the Saturn dealer and I wrote my name on it and my phone number and handed it to her. And I thought, God, I hope when the wine wears off, she realizes I don't work for Saturn and that I had a piece of artwork for sale. And so that's just an example of, you know, within the, the, the pantheon of archetypes, there's what they call the wounded healer. And the wounded healer is a person who can be really compassionate with others because of the, the, the things that have happened in his or her life. And that makes it possible. You know, I think carrying that into a classroom and being a teacher, having been wounded in, in my own ways means that I can relate to all of that and the insecurities and the fears that other people who are budding artists or blossoming artists or blossoming creatives to how they feel. And so it, it's been hard for me to, to get a little bit braggy about what we do in CST. But the fact of the matter is, 
when people engage, and it is, this year it was, it was 100% women. And I have had men in the program in the past, but I think there's an underserved uh, category and it's women of a certain age who are just so hungry to be creative. And there, this is, this is all kinds of women. We have black women and we have Asian women and we have women from Scotland and the UK and Argentina and Australia and New Zealand. And the thing that we have in common as a community is that we're all just lusting after the, the, the development of, our, of the creative part of ourselves that is as inherent in us as our five senses. It's in us. And sometimes we just haven't had an opportunity to, to help that come out and blossom for lots of reasons that we talk about. And if I do anything, I want to dispel the, or harness the elephant in the room and lead it outside so it can graze in the open jungle again by admitting that this is, this is what we're all up against, why we're drawn to each other, and that if we're committed to anything, Zen and I, we're committed to a safe place where we can, e each particular member can choose the level of, of silence and also security that works for them in order to be part of this group, which will eventually be so overwhelmingly loving to you that you will feel as though you've come home in some way. People say that to me all the time. And I, I, I know it isn't for everyone, but I know that when, when, when people come to the table here and fully participate in the, in the way that, that is possible, it, it can be really life altering. It has been for me. Ingrid, I'm glad you're here. Would you like to speak? I'd love to. Thank you, Jane. First of all, I have found today really, really wonderful because last year when I joined and I joined Immersion, it was because I have a number of um, art quilter friends who recommended Jane's book and Jane's program so highly, but I didn't have an overview. So as I went through, I read things, I thought about the archetypes, but this is really suddenly made a lot of things click for me. Um, a couple of things that I loved about this, and, and I really echo what was just said, is to be gentle with yourself. Because there is a lot, and sometimes I couldn't get to those Wednesday meetings, and I thought, oh dear. And then I'd listen to some, and I just had to stop and say, it's okay. You know, you'll get out of this program what you want to get out of it. A couple of things happened for me. And this whole idea of acceptance of self, Jane talked about one of the archetypes, which you'll learn about, I think, which is called the dilettante. And the dilettante loves to explore and experience all different things. And I suddenly went, that's me. And it's okay. <laughs> and, you know, um, you know, I, I love doing my art quilting and I love dyeing fabric and embroidering and photography. And it was this, ah, you know what? It's okay. And so we, we talked about sort of the positive parts of things, but also to harness those parts that might run away on us that we might not feel so good about. And so it was incredibly positive. And so that's what the year really became for me. And I was part of one of those small groups and it was um, a fiber plus, I think it was called. And such a lovely group of people and some had more experience and some had less experience but it was really about celebrating what everybody was doing and being encouraging. And um, it was just so positive. And, you know, by the end of the year, some of the people knew each other already because they'd done this before. And this was my first year, but I would say, oh, maybe even about halfway through, I just so looked forward to our get togethers. We laughed a lot, we talked a lot, we shared a lot of our art. Um, it was such an incredibly positive experience. And now I'm going back and I'm looking at things going, oh, you know, sometimes things make sense in retrospect. And so I look back and I think, oh, that's how that fit. And it's part of that whole, whole process. And the funny thing is, um, well, ironic in a way, Jane had a, a white stone ceremony and, and um, which I wasn't able to participate in because of timing but I'd never thought of really picking a word for the year. And without even looking, Jane, at your, um, you know, your four C's, what really came to me is this year, it's all about clarity for me. So last year was all about exploring, 
And this year is about finding some clarity and how things fit together. Um, so it's a really positive experience. And I just wanna say that if you're finding as you go through that you're not sure how some things connect, that's okay too, because it will. And sometimes it may take some time, but I'm back. Um, and, and I'm so glad I am. And I'll tell you that that first exhibit that I entered, I was so nervous about it and thinking, oh my gosh, there are people who are inc so incredibly talented. And I just thought, you know what? Start where you are. Start where you are and go from there. And um, so I can only say it was an absolutely wonderful experience and, and I'm looking forward to it again. And thank you, Jane, for your, for your gentleness, for your encouragement. Um, for your reassurance for people in the program. I think you do that so well and you give, you give space and you share and you give knowledge. And Zena, thank you too. I think you're just such a wonderful team and Wayne too, um, to make this all work. So that's it. Thank you. Thanks. That's lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Please help me. Is it Sh Shari or Sherry? It's Shari. It's short for Charlotte. I thought so. Okay. okay. Thank you. So, thank you. I did recently join CST, so I'm excited to do this. But uh, when you mentioned curious, I thought, I don't have any problem with being curious. My problem is, is being disciplined to stick to one thing long enough to complete something because I'm, I mean, I spend a lot of time in art stores buying supplies for things that never get made. <laughs> So I don't have to go to an art store for a long time in taking your class, I think. Um, but it's I really what I really like in what you presented today is it's a way to discipline myself to say, how do you have an outcome from all these different things that you're experimenting? It's not it's not that I haven't enjoyed all these different adventures I've gone on. And I it makes me wonder how do people get through the uh, the pandemic if they're not makers? Mm -hmm. I can't imagine what my life would be like if I didn't connect with other people um, to, to work on, on things that we make. I do teach a class to middle schoolers and, and um, high schoolers in sewing, basic sewing, and now I'll start with a multimedia class this next term. And I've used your line often. Well, we're all adults here. We can decide for ourselves what we want to do. <laughs> And so I, I'm plagiarizing already. I'm sorry. No but, um, <laughs> it's all there to share. The other thing is, um, I think it was Ingrid that uh, I think her name was Ingrid, was that she said she's a dilettante, and I think that's me. I'm so excited to try all these different things, but now getting some discipline on that too. You know, I can get too rigid or I can get too flighty. And finding that middle ground is really challenging for me. And I also come from a psychology and, and human, human biology background. But um, so you helped me to take what I learned, my master's degree, to apply it to my fun stuff. So thank you. You're welcome. Well, you know, um, and I should introduce the other member of the team because she's making herself so obvious back here. But that's the dog, Pema. Um, one thing listening to you and thinking about what you're saying, Shari, is that I think one, it, it's, it is, as, as has been said here, being a dilettante is not a bad thing. But I do think that there are many of us who get to a particular point in our development where we would really like to focus on a thing or a set of skills for a period of time. One of the things that keeps us from doing that is the, well, I think fear of failure is pretty obvious, but I also think it's true that we're afraid that if we put everything else away, somehow we'll be missing out. So we keep bouncing back and forth between lots of different things. And the, all of this involves per, fairly small shifts in our perception or in our thinking. Because if we, so I, I'm, I'm really big on, on bargaining with the brain, with the, the mind part of who we are. For instance, by saying to yourself, okay, I'm gonna put these things away and just focus on this one thing, which is where the preferences come in. What do you wanna do first? What's really calling you? 
Well, start with that and give yourself a certain period of time during which you will approach that and work on whatever that is. And then at the end of that time, you can decide that you're going to continue with it or you can, and I don't mean one day. I mean, say that you're going to work on something like with me, I decided I would work with silk for one year when I was still really involved a lot in dyeing and hand painting and that sort of thing, which is how I got started. And because I stuck on, stuck with silk for a year, at the end of the year, I loved silk. I stayed with silk for 10 years, but I learned so much about silk and I became so really in a way masterful at working with dyeing silk that it was very satisfying. And that's part of what kept me there. But it didn't mean that I ever gave up the idea that if I wanted to, I could go to linen or I could go to cotton. And you know, maybe it's kind of a dumb example, but I'm hoping that it, it sort of makes the point. And so I think one of the things that we we talk about over the course of the year many times, because this stuff doesn't ever get settled, it keeps coming back up all the time. But I think that when we can decide that we're going to focus on one thing for a period of time and really give it uh, the respect that it deserves, then we start thinking about how we use our time and how we use the materials that we have a little bit differently. And, and what, where we're really headed with this, Shari, is toward what I think of as um, alignment. And anybody who's read CST has already read the chapter on alignment. But I think for me, alignment means that what you love to do and what you're good at doing are how you spend your time. And so sometimes we don't ever consciously decide how we're going to go move toward alignment. And so that's part of this whole idea of a practice as we move into feeling more aligned, because when you're aligned, you, you feel more satisfaction in what you're doing, if that makes sense. But thanks for the questions. Joyce, please. There we go. Hi. Um, I've been in CST for two years, but last year I took a break because of some other things that I was doing. And you really hit it today when you said uh, to find the one thing that you want to focus on um, and do it for a year. And it may lead to a couple of years. Uh, in that year that I was out of CST, um, I developed this desire to learn to draw and to draw faces of all things. And I've done a, a 12 series on Picasso faces, the abstract cubism. And uh, I've sent you some pictures where I've started into doll making. And mm -hmm. there's a part of me that keeps saying, no, 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 Joyce, you need to go back and be the quilter that got you started in this. So I go through that, that um, like you said, that bargaining thing. Okay, well, let me make this and then I'll go back and I'll make a quilt. Or, and when I say quilt, they're all wall hangings. And I'm hoping that with this 10 month program in CST, it'll force me or give me the, dis I don't wanna say force, but give me the discipline to go ahead and explore and work more on this new uh, creative uh, ability that I have found in drawing faces and expressing myself through Cubism, uh, Picasso, and through doll making. So um, the, it's just a wonderful opportunity to, to just dedicate that time for 10 months and say, this is it. And I, that's so good that you said that. That's exactly what I needed to hear and what I need to do. Right. Good. Well, I look forward to being along on that journey, Joyce. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. I think Zena might have some questions that we're going to answer, but but Lynn, please, will you, will you take the stage? I just wanted to, hi Jane, by the way, it's nice to see you again. But I just also wanted to say that I echo whatever the people who have been in CST has, has already said and said so well. But I wanted to add, when I started last year, I really didn't know what I was looking for. I just knew I wasn't doing as much as I could do. And I had no language or no way to say, I want to do something different. And I didn't even know, well, what is there that's different? I'm a quilter, you know, I sew pieces of fabric together. And the best part was that I met a group of people that were doing a hundred different things that were so mind-bogglingly gorgeous. It just opened up my, my brain to what could be 
And in the same time, it opened my brain to think, okay, you know, you could be more than this person who keeps to themselves and doesn't talk and, you know, doesn't want to talk about their art and to finally say, I'm an artist. And I, I, I mean, I, if I hadn't known what the course was about, I never would have done it <laughs> because it just opened up. It, it, was, it was hard because you had to think about who you were and you have to think about what do you want, not what somebody else wants. And it, it, but it was the best experience that I've ever had. So if you're on the, I just want to say, if you're on the, um, on the edge of saying yes or no, you know, like go for it. You've got nothing left to, you've got nothing to lose. And even listening today, and I'm so glad I said, well, I've been there. I don't need to listen to what you've got to say. But I never understood, Jane, about how this all get, went, goes together. And now, you know, it's just the exposure and the exposure and digging at things, you know. So, oh, now I understand. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you. And um, and, I just, and you can teach old, I saw brides, new tricks. And it's, it's the best thing that happened to me last year. Oh, and the other part is, how else would you ever get to meet quilters from around or artists from around the world, you know, and, and which who all have a different perspective. And it's just neat. It's just a, a great experience. So I would highly encourage anybody to, to join up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's very sweet of you. Senna, have you got some questions? Would you like like to take the stage? Sure. Um, first, I just want to say how lovely it is to see all of your faces. And it's really been my honor to support this community and make it, bring it online, I guess, and help make it happen. And I just, um, I loved my time working with mom and, and this community so far. So I'm looking forward to this year. Um, the only question I see so far on in the chat is from Laura and uh, it's a question we get sometimes, uh, what if you don't do Facebook really? And we recognize people have varying opinions about social media and Facebook. And if you don't wanna do Facebook, that's absolutely fine. Um, if you're on, in the immersion level, um, you can still attend all of the meetings, you can uh, participate in the critiques and the case studies and interact with the community that way. Um, the big thing that happens on Facebook, of course, there's kind of ongoing conversation there, which is wonderful, but we do that uh, creative, uh, developing your creative eye. And a lot of people share their photos on Facebook. If you don't do Facebook, you can email us your photos and still be entered in that kind of drawing that we do at the end of the month. Um, and we can even share your, if you'd like us to share your photos in the Facebook group. So we try and make it, uh, accessible to people who don't want to, to join Facebook. And um, yeah, if, if you have any questions about that, please email me. Um, happy to continue to talk about it a little bit. So I don't see any other questions so far. Okay. And I think it's worth saying too that um, because I had a question about this in an email recently, she, she just wasn't familiar with Facebook and had never done Facebook, which is a little bit different from not wanting to be part of Facebook for other reasons. And we respect it. Really, you know, one of the best things about, about this is that <clears throat> it's a great lesson that I've been learning for 20 years, ever since I started reading and studying sacred contracts and archetypes, is that every aspect of life has a personal significance and it also has an impersonal significance. And the sooner we adopt the impersonal aspect of the fact that we all are self-centered as human beings, we have to be in order to survive. And when you keep that in mind, you realize that everybody is just as self-centered as you are. And that means it all sort of balances out the playing field. And you can, you can, learn to, to, to think less personally so that when people are doing things that are, that are a problem for you, it doesn't have to be about you. And that is the underlying belief that we bring to all of what we do, because that means then we can do what we do um, really from the, from the perspective of service and let the members own and be grown-ups like Shari said, 
when it comes to how they manage their time and their energy and their own resources, so to speak. And as far as Facebook, that's relevant because we respect you no matter how you feel about Facebook, we don't really care. But if, you, if, if the issue is that you're not that familiar with Facebook in the way that you might not be very familiar with Zoom, but you have an interest in knowing or understanding a little bit more, then we can help you in that way. So it is possible to join Facebook and just participate in the CST stuff and not, not do anything personal and not have any political conversations with anybody and not engage on the Facebook platform in any other way. Now, of course, they would still have your information. And if you don't like that, that's totally cool. But if, if, if not being on Facebook and not participating in the Creative Eye, for example, is because you don't really know how it works, then we're here to help you get past that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's true for Zoom as mm -hmm. well. You know, we're all kind of learning all the time and none of us came out fully formed and we all have to help each other. And one of the things very important to me, to both of us, is that we, we don't get political here we don't get, um, we don't, obviously we're not gonna be racist and we're not gonna be, uh, we, none of that, none of that negativity enters into anything we do here. It's not allowed, it's bad form and it doesn't build community. And the sooner we all agree, and I assume that when people, women artists join this community, it's, already implied that you agree with those basic guidelines and that you wanna uplift those too. And I think that's the route forward in, in some small way. I might not be able to change the world, but I can set um, an example and ask you to, to join me in setting that example. And that example with enough energy behind it can change some small part of the world. Artists have a tremendous opportunity to influence the world in a positive way. And that's where I choose to put the energy for the days that I have left on the planet, which are going to be long and bountiful. So you don't have to worry about that at all. Lauren. Hello, this is actually my second question. So I appreciate you taking it. Okay. Um, I, uh, you know, as you could tell from my earlier question, I'm very brand new to this. I'm excited about it. I think it, I think it might be right for me. Um, my question is this, I have another friend that um, is very much into self-knowledge and I think that she might also benefit from something like this, but I've noticed that a lot of the speakers and participants seem to be into fiber art and quilting as I am. My friend does drawing and ceramics. Do you feel as though the content in this program uh, would would also be pertinent to someone with those interests. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because this is, it, it just so happens that since my background is in textiles, a lot of the, the original audience that I had was a textile audience. But that isn't true for creative strength training because the thread that, the thread that ties all of us together, no matter what our interests might be, is that creativity is creativity and the concepts of design and composition and color are universal. They're bigger than we are. Sacred geometry is bigger than we are. Archetypes are bigger than we are. And so all of that, everything that I showed in the presentation is legitimate, is relevant to anyone, no matter what their interest is. So I have people, for instance, there's a writing group that is part a topical group that's a writing group. And there's a there, I don't think there was a mixed media group last year, but there could be, there is a photography group. And there's also a digital media group that, that explores apps and shares apps that they found. And so um, we haven't had a ceramic group per se, but we've had a number of people who make ceramics, who work in ceramics and uh, polymer clay, and to some extent glass, although not quite as much. So I, I definitely think that the, the, the real question for me, you know, if somebody says, is CST a good fit for me? What am I gonna get out of it? The bottom line is, if you're really interested in exploring who you are as a creative being, and you wanna expand that creativity so that it ripples out into all of your life and it's not pigeonholed somewhere, 
and you want to do that with other people around you talking about it who are like-minded, you know, one of the most beautiful things about this is that we all speak the same language. We're not all fluent in archetype. We're not all fluent in design principles. We're, we're in various spots on the continuum. But this, I think one of the reasons that these uh, members who've spoken up, which I did not initiate in any way, I think one of the reasons that people have spoken up about their participation and what it's meant to them is because they're, what they're really saying is that they found a place where there was a shared language. And so we're here to help people get up to speed with the language. And some people, you know, I can speak just enough French to say, would you like to sleep with me tonight? And I got that from a song, okay? So I'm not fluent in French by any stretch of the imagination. And there are plenty of people who are way more fluent in French and that's all great, you know? And if I need to learn something, I know I've got resources here somewhere. So that's kind of the attitude I think we have when we go into this. And I, I hope you'll encourage your friend to join because I think in many, in many situations, we have friends who've joined together. And even a couple of times we've had a group of nine or 10 members who joined together and then they met. This was back in the old days when we could do that. They met and talked about it once a month and had lunch and et cetera, et cetera. So I think there are a lot of ways to broaden the um, experience of being in community. But it's, it's fun to have a friend to talk about it with. Well, I'm going to forward uh, her your email, uh, and um, she. I think there will be time for her to possibly sign up for Friday's presentation on archetypes, which to me so far is one of the most exciting things that I've encountered. I I mean, it's. I think probably we all maybe have all of them, and there are certain ones that I'm actually wrestling with. So I'm I'm excited about learning more. And I think she may feel similarly. So I will share this. Okay, great. Thank you. And she could watch this too, because it'll be available tomorrow. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, you know, as soon as we get past the idea that archetypes in some way threaten religion or threaten, are, are, are threatening in some way, and we begin to see how much fun it is, it's like reading fairy tales. You read fairy tales and you don't feel threatened by the fairy tales. You get into the stories and the characters and it's interesting to think about all of that. And, you know, are you Hansel or are you Gretel? Are you Sleeping Beauty? Who are you? And the archetypes are the same thing. I've got a huge game. I've, I've known my archetypes for 15 or 20 years and they are active in my life all the time. And I can call Zen up and I can say, damn, this just happened and my victim is coming out big time. And I've got a huge damsel in distress and she's gradually morphed into a benevolent queen. And the older you get and the more in touch with all this you get, the more you see that this is really a kick to figure yourself out from this angle. And I'll tell you, I've got one group that talks about archetypes and they're, I think the group has eight or nine members and at least five of them are queens. And that is a very interesting dynamic. That's like having five firstborns in one room. And as soon as we can acknowledge it, then we can kind of laugh about it and get a little bit more lighthearted about it. It doesn't have to be a heavy, terrible thing because the other thing that we figure out about archetypes or realize is that they're neutral. They're not all bad. They're not all good either. The good is the lesson that we have to learn and the shadow side is, is the part of ourselves that we haven't met yet or that we haven't engaged with. And the sooner we can start engaging with that and move more in, toward the light side and be willing to talk about it, when you can start talking about this stuff, it is such a relief. You're not carrying it all around by yourself anymore. You're in a community where we're talking about it. We all get it. And it's all, guess what? It's all okay. It's great. Deborah. Yeah, I just wanted to say, I think one of the... <clears throat> things that I value most about CST, Jane, is that you and your entire team have really, you consistently and persistently create an environment that feels safe and welcoming, and yet it's honest. So I, in the sense that, I don't know if people have had the experience where every piece of work that you put up Everybody says, oh, it's wonderful. I love it. It's phenomenal. And, and, and I was really 
wanting constructive criticism and feedback and you really have a gift for that and it's very hard to find and I value that honesty that you'll say have you thought about this but it's all done in such a kind way and I think that that has um, permeated the character of the whole group because I see that consistently with the other artists the other participants it's not um, I've never seen anyone be demeaning or belittling or anything. And I think it's just an amazing, wonderful environment where people can grow and thrive. And again, I just appreciate it so much. Thanks. Well, I, I think that, you know, it's hard to be vulnerable. It's really hard to be vulnerable. It's even harder to be vulnerable when you're in a leadership role. But you haven't let that elephant outside to graze in the jungle if you don't talk about it. And you have to figure that if that puts somebody off, that's their problem. It's not your problem. And I think that, that we're all here to be our best selves, our best creative selves. That's why we're here. And we can all have our moments. I could give you a list of my shadow moments that would take an hour and a half to, to even begin to get into, you know? And uh, if, if you join and you come to the retreat, I've actually been thinking this morning, I wanted people to tell archetype stories and nobody's stepped up to tell a story for the last uh, two hour session of the retreat. So I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just tell as many shadow stories about my archetypes as I can find, like the time I was supposed to give a talk and they forgot the remote control and nobody would go home and get it. And I pitched a fit and went out to the car and sat for 20 minutes. And suddenly it was like some spirit was, was shining down the car. And I thought, who the hell do I think I am? Who do I think I am? This is ridiculous. Get over yourself, Jane. Get in there and give that talk. You're professional. And I went in and I said, I don't know what came over me. I'm really, really sorry. Yeah, I'll get up on the stage and when it's time for a slide, I'll just I'll just go like this and you can just move the slides for me. What is the big damn deal, Jane? And I think the more honest we can be about that, the you know, it's hard and I'm not asking everybody to 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 talk out of school about themselves or tell the I'm not telling you you have to say that, but I'll tell you that I can say it because I realize this is the path to authenticity and that's where we're headed and it it works yeah there are people who don't like me it's all right wouldn't you rather have people that didn't like you than people who didn't even remember who you were I'd much rather be either positive or negative I don't want to be neutral I don't want to be pale gray so that's pretty much where we are I don't want you to be pale gray either Anyhow, our hour's pretty much up, and I do try to stick to the clock because I do know how important your time is, but I really appreciate the fact that you spent this time with me, and I've actually been kind of scanning the screen and seeing faces of people that I've never met in person, like Sean Delker, and now I finally know what you look like, so this is all good. It's fun. If you've got other questions, feel free to write to me. If you have time on Friday, join in, and we will see you then. Zena, would you like to say anything else in closing? I'm just grateful for the time. Thank you all for being here. Yeah. Great. Okay. Have a great afternoon. Bye-bye. <laughs>